What is up, guys? Coach Tiro here with your Fit Body Secret short for the week. Today, I want to talk about metabolic stress. And I actually thought about this when I was in the middle of a training session the other day, and I was feeling like I was under a ton of metabolic stress. And realizing that it's taking me a lot more volume, a lot more intensity to get that same feeling of metabolic stress. And I wanted to kind of go over that a little bit with you guys, because it's important for people to understand how this does play a factor in your results in the gym in terms of getting fitter, but also with your body composition. If you are trying to lose, lose weight, you're trying to improve blood biomarkers, especially insulin levels and, and blood pressure and things like that, that this metabolic stress is necessary. And there's a number of ways that we can create it, but most of you guys out there are CrossFitters. So I'm going to talk a little bit about metabolic conditioning. So first things first. What do I mean by metabolic stress? Well, essentially what your metabolism is, it's your body's internal barometer. It's essentially taking whatever charges, AKA things you're doing throughout the day in and how much you're actually recovering from those things and figuring out how to troubleshoot where to use the energy it has available. And that's why having metabolic stress is important. If you want to create an adaptation, you want to lose weight, you want to get fitter, you want to improve you know, your endurance, your stamina, those things are going to require metabolic stress. You can't expect to be able to do 30 thrusters unbroken and feel good if you can't do 10 unbroken and feel good, right? So we've got to start somewhere. So we need to create some metabolic stress. Now, as I said, most of you guys are CrossFitters out there. You're familiar with metabolic conditioning. And essentially what these workouts are meant to do is to kind of find in different time domains, different stimuluses, finding ways to, to trigger a metabolic stress different, you know, so a, a 20 to 30 minute workout is going to be more of a longer, a longer, slower burning metabolic stress where your actually threshold is going to be uh, a little bit lower. So you can sustain it a little bit longer. Whereas something like Fran, you're going to be hitting that metabolic stress, super high heart rate. And we kind of want to blend of both because there's other things that are going to factor into this metabolic stress that I'm going to talk to you guys about and our ability to recover from them. So the first thing that I want to kind of break down, I know I'm going to keep this one short today, is you got two ends of the spectrum. You've got, uh, and this is what I was thinking about the other day in my workout, is you've got the people that are literally just burning the candle. Like they're, and this is typically the one that really wants to lose weight. And they're in the gym and they're freaking just burning up the calories. They're like checking their Apple Watch or checking their whoop strap, trying to get their strain up. And they're, they're always just trying to burn calories, burn calories, burn calories. And that is creating a lot of metabolic stress along with if they're in a calorie deficit. So short-term adaptation is your body will obviously lose weight. You're going to start burning up whatever sort of energy is available. Long-term, that is going to create a negative adaptation. Our body's going to start to say, hey, this is a lot of stress. The paces you were holding, the things you were holding are now going to start to kind of decrease because your body's trying to slow down a little bit to make up for the lack of energy. And this is where people that don't measure uh, things like that we do in CrossFit aren't even aware of that because they're not paying attention to their paces. They don't even realize that things are coming down, which is not a plug for CrossFit, but definitely a plug for making sure you guys are measuring progress. Now, on the flip side of that, you've got the people that don't have any metabolic stress in terms of conditioning. They are very sedentary. Um, and in short term, this can also be a good thing, right? We, we maybe need to take a break. Maybe this person that was overdoing it needs to take a little bit of time off and relax a little bit, right? But long-term, that's going to create more metabolic stress because actually most of we're honestly, most people that are very sedentary are likely eating a lot more than they're actually burning. It's hard to be in a calorie maintenance when you're not very active. Um, and without them creating any way to create better circulation, you know, that's that the building of the mitochondria, all that stuff happens through exercise. So you're actually creating another metabolic stress by being inactive. That's almost just as stressful in the body as doing too much because now other things are going wrong. Um, excess body fat will start to accumulate. Like I said, you're not getting that blood flow. You're not building up mitochondria. Immune system can be um, obviously triggered in a negative way. A lot of things can happen on the flip side of things. So we want to find that sweet spot. And there isn't an actual number. And this is what I want to make you guys understand is that everybody is very, very different. And it's going to determine by a couple of things. One, your training age. So as I mentioned myself, I've got a lot longer training age. I can handle a lot more volume before my body gets stressed out, which is good and bad because sometimes I have to work a little harder to get stressed out uh, to create that adaptation. I have to push things a little bit harder, which is you know part of where there's individualized pieces of this that come into play. 
because at some point it's no longer just a metabolic stress. It's now becoming a central nervous system stressor and, and a mental stressor. So there's things that have to be played into factor with this. Um, so you have to know your training age matters. And obviously, you know, the type of training modalities you do, uh, the type of metabolic stressor you're imposing too much in one domain and the other is going to create negative balance. So if you're always doing the short, high output stuff, you're definitely going to be draining that central nervous system. And it's going to be hard to recover. If you're not doing enough recovery, there's, there's all these things, but outside of just your training, other factors that are going to play into factor are, are things like your hormone profile, um, you know, your digestive system, like what kinds of foods you're eating and how your body's processing those foods. And, and obviously, like I said, nutrition in general. So how much you're actually eating, how many calories you're taking in, getting in enough protein, getting enough carbohydrates to re re tap that glycogen source after you've depleted it, because metabolic conditioning is going to burn up a ton of your glycogen. Um, I already kind of mentioned with myself, the psychological stressors, but not just in your training outside. If you're carrying a lot of emotional baggage or a lot of stress stuff from work into your training, that's going to affect your metabolic stress. Um, you know, so there's so many things that I want you guys to understand. However, the main reason for this episode is that we need to create a, a training stressor in terms of metabolic conditioning, a metabolic stressor that is the right dose for us. And how do we know when we're there? So it comes down to a couple of things. Uh, and it's, it's really a feeling it's, it's a feeling, you know, you know, when you left the gym and you're like, I left some in the tank. And sometimes you want to do that. Sometimes you want to leave knowing that you left anything, but in your workouts, if you're not getting to like an RPE of like a seven to a nine, uh, on a regular basis, at least three to four days a week for a relative amount of time, you definitely are probably under training the metabolic system. And this is where if you're like, why am I not losing any weight? And I'm doing CrossFit six times a week and I'm dieting. Sometimes it's not the actual things you're doing. It's how you're doing them. So you might need to increase things. If your workouts are always five to 10 minutes, you are only putting this high intensity stress in, which like I mentioned, is going to cause an adaptation. Maybe you are no longer pushing that high of intensity anymore because you're getting a little bit burned out. We're adding in a longer, a lot of the longer, slower stuff might benefit to you. So how do you know that you're in the sweet spot? That feeling should be in play. You've got enough work in. Um, if you find that you're like leaving and you're like, I could actually do an extra set. Sometimes I actually recommend people like do an extra set, see how you feel. Maybe you realize that was a set you needed. Or if it was four sets and you're like, I probably could have pushed a little harder, do an extra set, see how that felt. That might be the adaptation that you need. And that going into next week, maybe you're like, all right, I know I need to push a little bit harder because I had to do an extra set to get that metabolic stress. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you know that you are overdoing it, that you're like, you know, always, you know, definitely overdoing it, especially in one specific domain, maybe you need to decrease the stress and that's going to allow your body to push more intensity. And this is so important for you guys to understand because when it comes to, like I said, fitness and changing and body composition, all those things, that right dose is what you need. You need to always be finding that threshold of pushing and, and it's not as straight set and straight cut as a linear progression on a, a weightlifting program that there is definitely going to be a lot of things, drains and charges going in. When we talk about metabolic stress that we have to kind of look out for, and it's really looking for that feeling and that we should always be looking to be making a little bit of progress from day to day. So short episode today, a little bit wordy, but I want you guys to understand that metabolic stress is, is an important piece of your fitness, of your body transformation changes and all of those types of things. And finding that sweet spot is so important. I guess I should leave with one more thing. Where should everybody start? I think that most people, and this is just like last thing is you should be getting your heart rate up for at least on your conditioning days, 20 minutes. And that might include a warm up. It might include a cool down, but reality is that's, that's a starting place, 20 minutes from there. We should be looking to go into 30 minutes. And that doesn't mean it always has to be uh, 30 minutes steady state. It could be 30 minutes of intervals. It could be a 10 minute workout. And then I said a, a capping of, of a little bit of endurance to, to kind of start with and then end with. It could be just the 30 minute steady state. It could be a number of things. And, and that's really important. Now, remember, weightlifting is also a component of this. Metabolic stress happens for weightlifting, but you're only doing 
one reps, you're not getting that conditioning piece. So maybe you are doing a, a little bit of a higher volume uh, strength cycle. You know, I recommend for a lot of my clients that don't do CrossFit per se, doing a lot of like the eight to 12 rep range on squats and deadlifts and presses. It's, you know, maybe not pushing that like CrossFit Metcon, the 21, 15 nines, but if you're doing five by 10 back squats and you're not getting out of breath, you probably are not going heavy enough at all. So finding that sweet spot is so important. I think for most gen pop, three to five days a week of around 20 minutes to start working up to 30 to 40 minutes is probably good. Outside of that though, making sure that you're also watching the stress coming in from the other parts of your life and that you are moving around throughout the day to kind of get things moving. That's all really important. So I also recommend kind of looking at things like getting some daily walks in, making sure that you're moving around throughout the day, making sure you're spending some time stressing and also relaxing from the stress of your life. So once again, short episode, a little bit about metabolic stress. 